Good morning. Welcome to Nazarene Baptist Church here in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor K. Marshall Williams, Sr., and we are excited and delighted that you've decided to join in with us in worship today. God has been a good God in spite of all that we face, all that's going on around us. The Lord is still good, and he's still large and in charge. I want to thank uh, Sister Crystal Lucas for the wonderful flowers that she uh, provided for us today at the pulpit in memory of some great servants of God, our brother Bobby Lucas and his dear bride, Sister Ellen Lucas, who over a year ago have gone on to be with the Lord. Thank you, Crystal. We are continuing to pray for you. Also, uh, Saturday, one, uh, praise dancers again will be providing uh, gifts for our seniors and um, the leadership of Sister Danielle Gardner and Trustee Vita Solomon and many others will be here with our young people to bless our seniors on Saturday. I believe it's at nine o'clock. I want to pray for Sister Lynette Reynolds, who lost her mother this week, and um, we want to keep her family in prayer, and all of our sick and shut-in, uh, Sister Geraldine Coleman was in the hospital briefly this week, and we are praying for her and others that haven't come to my attention. We are holding you up in prayer. Thank you, uh, church family and friends, for your support. Uh, we do thank the Lord for a $500 gift given uh, from the family of Sister Mary and Bailey to enhance the ministry of our young people. And we thank God for that gift. Let's uh, open up this morning with a word of prayer. God, thank you for these meditative moments that you've given us to assemble around the footstool of mercy and proclaim and explain your holy and unadulterated word. God, first we Pray that you would cleanse our hearts, that we confess our sin, that we might be clean before you, might be a vessel unto honor fit for the master's use. And Lord, we pray that you'd sanctify the hearts of the hearers, that they would hear the engrafted word, which is able to build them up and give them an inheritance among all them that are set apart for your service. Bless us now, Lord, anoint this word that it might bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. This morning, I want you to meet me in the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, the first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter five. Um, I want to begin reading at verse 13. It says, um, you are the salt of the earth, but the salt has lost his savor. Wherewith shall it be salted? It is then good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it shall give it light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want to preach this morning, it's time. Matter of fact, it's past time to stand up for Jesus. It's time to stand up for Jesus. If there's ever a time, if there's ever a season where we need to stand up for Jesus, it's today. With a multiplicity of uh, hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes rocking our existence, Kingdom citizens. Uh, what is a kingdom citizen, by the way? Uh, those that are set on, our hearts are fixed 
to allow the comprehensive rule and reign of the Lord Jesus Christ to be operative in their daily practicum, in their daily life, in every arena of life. Matter of fact, beloved, it's past time that we as kingdom citizens, because this is not our home, we're, as Abraham said, we're looking for a better city whose builder and maker is God. And the text gives us implication that it's time for kingdom citizens um, to be what God has foreordained for us to be. And that is, as the text says, salt in the midst of a decaying society that is in danger of uh, decay and destruction. This world is in danger of hell, fire, and brimstone. And we who are kingdom citizens, we need to watch it because we're in danger of being uh, of the world while in the world. So we got to watch ourselves. That's why Isaiah said we got to come out from among them. We are in the world, but we're not of the world and not copy the practices of the world. Uh, Isaiah said we got to come out from among them and be ye separate, be ye sanctified, uh, be holy, not holier than thou, because we cannot forget where we've come from. I want to have a witness this morning. We cannot forget that all of us are members of the such with some of you club in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 that they were, we were once uh, in darkness, we were once drunkards, or we were once uh, revilers, or we were once children of disobedience. All of us were members of the such were some of you club. And those of us that are saved, we can't remember, we can't forget right, where we've come from. We gotta understand and keep it always on our minds that I am what I am, that I am who I am, and whose I am, solely by the grace and the mercy and the love and the justice of Almighty God. Amen goes right there. You see, beloved, uh, in our text this morning, uh, Jesus says, uh, we who stand for him, are to be the salt of the earth. And by salting the earth, we are uh, the preservative, the, the purifier of the, but this present age. Jesus is saying that we are to be a preservative and a purifier in the world. Now, salt uh, tastes salty. There's nothing quite like salt. I use uh, pink salt. It's called sea salt. It's Himalayan salt. It's a little better for you. Others may look like salt and may have the same texture, but nothing else really tastes like salt. Or nothing else can do what salt can do. And as a Christian, with the spirit of the living God in us. Uh, we have what nobody else has on the planet. I want to go pray with me this morning. We have the good life. Huh? He said, I've come that you might have the good life. Have life more abundantly. Uh, John 10.10, 10, the B portion. He says that we have the forgiveness of sin. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 nobody else has that but the children of the most high God somebody got witness this morning we have uh, John 14 1 uh, a hope in glory a home and a hope in glory the scripture said uh, in my daddy's house uh, I know I got a Bible read out there on many mansions, many dwelling places. If it were not so, I wouldn't have said so. We have the power to be incarnational truth. Uh, Acts 1-8, we have dynamite uh, 
underneath the skin uh, in the person of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we have all things, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, that pertain uh, to life, to living life, and to living life in a godly way. God has already helped me, the Holy Ghost, uh, it's that truth in my heart uh, that when I got saved, uh, I want you to go pray with me this morning, that God gave me everything I need uh, to live for him. Help me, Holy Ghost, uh, to actualize uh, in my heart uh, what I internalize as a spiritual academician in my head uh, that God has given us that God has given me everything I need uh, to live uh, for him. Holy Ghost say amen. The Bible says uh, that we can be incarnational truth, uh, tabernacling on two feet, uh, and have the ability because of the authority of the Almighty, help the Holy Ghost, uh, to love everybody even when they're unlovely. And to be relationally incarnate that we might feel what somebody else feels. That's what it means to be salt. When Jesus talks about salt, beloved, uh, he's talking about influence. He's talking about impact that we have uh, when we stand uh, up in his name. When we stand up in polity, in walk, and in practicum, in talk, we are in the house, the people of God, uh, that are supposed to make a difference uh, and not uh, hinder heathens uh, from hearing us when we holler about the holy because of our hypocrisy. We ought to be the salt of the earth. We ought to be stepping stones, not stumbling blocks. We are the salt of the earth and nobody on the planet, beloved, can do what God has called us to do. That we might uh, be an ocular demonstration and a picture of illustration of what a kingdom citizen ought to be. We are to impact every person that we come in contact with. Every person in our concentric circle of contact when they come in our presence ought to know that they're being exposed to a child of Almighty God. And one of our witness this morning standing for Christ means uh, salting uh, the earth. It means this mandate prevents us from just going along, minding our own business, leaving everybody else's alone, because we are our brother's keeper. Our mandate is, as the Galatians 6.10 says, to do good to everybody. Excuse my street vernacular. It says to do good to everybody, especially those of the household of faith. If anybody ought to treat anybody all right, it ought to be a Christian. He says uh, we were made uh, to impact people for good, for God's good. Now think about it. Why? Because of what we know about life and death and what we know about the life to come. We got some information and some inspiration uh, that's designed for practical application that, that ought to help everybody we come in contact with. We know something about soteriology. We know something about salvation. We know something about homotheology. We know something about the doctrine of sin and how man is totally depraved. We, we know something about pneumatology, that as a Christian, we can be spirit-filled. We know something about ecclesiology. We know something about what the church is supposed to be out in this sin sick secular society. And we know something about eschatology. We know what's going to happen 
was on the horizon. We know that Jesus is coming soon. And it's time to get our houses in order. Hallelujah. We know that uh, only when we hunger, Matthew 5, 6, and thirst for righteousness will we be satisfied. Will we be content? We know that uh, it will position us for great impact because of, uh, uh, of what we've learned uh, about the God of the universe uh, and how he cares uh, for his people. I'm going to be know he cares for you this morning. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I'm so glad he cares. Uh, and he cares because he knows just how much uh, we can bear. So he says, uh, how can we be salt? Uh, how can we stand up for Jesus? With what? Where? In your concentric circle of contact. In your framework of personality, God said, I want to use you with your spouse, your siblings, your children, your church members, your co-workers, your community. I want to use you who are uniquely unique with your special gifts and talents because you didn't choose me, John 15, 16. I chose you and I chose you for a purpose to bear fruit. The fruit is love. What the world needs now, what the church needs now, is a God they love, unconditional love. I need some salt shakers. Salt is the word of God. The world needs us to take the salt, the word of God, and shake it. Shake it in our talk. But more importantly, shake it in our walk. That we might say, I choose uh, to salt the earth. And also choose uh, to shine the light. He says in verse 14, he says, you're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. You're not only, verse 13, the salt of the earth. And if you lose your savior, you're good for nothing. Got a lot of good for nothing Christians. Not salting the word in their life or their lips. Hallelujah. The Bible says uh, they'll be cast out, trodden under the foot of men. Men will pay you no attention. Excuse my three minute. No attention. We're supposed to be the light of the world. Salt has the capacity to impact. Light has the ability to illuminate. We want to impact and illuminate because the world is a dark place. Hallelujah. Another black woman shot and her accusers, her, 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 her perpetrators go free. The world is dark. Another young person strung out, stretched out. The world is dark. Hallelujah. Notice Jesus says, you are the salt. You are the light. He doesn't say, just try to be or make yourself to be into. He says, you are. It's the very nature of who we are in Christ. We are salt shakers. We are to make impact. We are to illuminate that which a dark world cannot see. It's our very nature of those of us who are in Christ. Imagine if you had been sitting in pitch blackness for the last 24 hours I'd be your best friend if I brought you a flashlight. We have the light of life. John 8 tell says, uh, when you have Jesus, you, have the, you won't walk in darkness, but you'll have the light of life. 
But the world is in so much darkness. And John three nineteen said they love it. Men love darkness. Rather than light. Why? Because the deeds are evil. And you know what? I said last Sunday, Satan's trick is they think they can get away with it, but the Bible said, be sure of it. Your sin will find you out. They can't comprehend the light. They don't want the light. They love darkness. They love, love living in darkness. Back in the day, we would say, turn out the lights. Hallelujah. That's what we would say. We love darkness. Matter of fact, they can't even comprehend it. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 talks about the uh, they don't want the light. They can't comprehend the light. Jesus said, I am the light. And when he calls us light, he says, we are to reflect him. Help me, Holy Ghost, that everything I say, everything I do, I keep in mind, I'm representing and reflecting him. And when I don't, uh, Hebrew says, those that he loves, and I know he loves me. I have to remind myself how much he loves me. Hallelujah. He said, if we don't, he'll chasten us and he'll scourge us because we are sons and daughters. He said, we are, we are the lamp. He is the light. <laughs> Just as the word of God is the word of God. That's why the hymnologist says, Heart the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn king. We are to reflect him. God is the salt. We are the shakers. Verse 14 says, A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Having a light but it's not shining? Ridiculous. It's sin to be given a light and won't let it shine. Hallelujah. Verse 15, neither do men light a candle, but put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Hallelujah. If God went to the trouble to put his light in us, the Holy Ghost, does he want it hidden? No. He wants it to shine. He doesn't want us to quench the spirit of God within us. He wants us uh, to be filled uh, every moment, Ephesians 5, 18, with the spirit of Almighty God. Be empowered by the spirit of Almighty God. But it takes work. It takes surrendering my will. Hallelujah. So that his light should shine. He says you've got to get your eyes off the horizontal agenda. Worrying about what other people are doing, what other people are saying about you, and get on the vertical agenda. What God created you to be, what God created me as Christians, created me to be as Christians, to be the light of the world. And he said, verse 16, in the same way, let this light so shine before men, because men are looking. They looking when we don't even know they're looking. They, that they might see the only gospel that many men will see, many women will see, is our lives, our good works, and glorify our Father in heaven. He said, let your light shine. He said, don't hide it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't bury it. Don't cover it up. Don't turn it off when you go in certain settings. He said, that's why we sing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. What, 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 why, why does our lights, why don't we, why do we hide our lights? We may desire to let it shine, but why do we turn it off sometimes? Why is it off sometimes? Well, why is it just a flickering flame? Well, number one, because of sin, unconfessed sin. Uh, our, our light would shine more in our families and our friends and even before our foes that if we would confess our sin, 
It goes by to say in Isaiah 59, 59 too, if I hide my iniquity in my heart, he won't hear me. Unconfessed sin that we haven't dealt with. And then here comes Satan. He uses the guilt to convince us that we have no right to turn the light on. We have no right to share Jesus with anybody. That's not from God. He's the accuser of the brethren. He, he, he says, uh, you ain't perfect. Uh, matter of fact, you need to get your, he even quotes scripture, you need to get the beam out of your own eye so you can see clearly. You need to mind your own business. Paul said, no, 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 I, I'm not what I used to be, uh, and I, but I may not be what I ought to be, and no, I'm not arrived yet, but I'm a work in progress. I'm pressing. Hallelujah. Though you show my sins in my face and my past sin and my present sin, uh, I'm, I'm growing in grace uh, and in the knowledge of the Lord. Uh, I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize uh, of the high calling in Christ Jesus, and I'm going to tell it anyhow. I heard him say, huh, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Second <laughs> Corinthians 12, 9, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Uh, he said, the weaker I am, the stronger the Lord is in my life. Uh, the more I depend and trust in him, uh, the more that he shows up in my life. Uh, I'm just a beggar uh, in my spirit. I'm spiritually impoverished. Uh, I'm just one beggar trying to show another beggar where to get bread. Uh, I'm not any better than anybody else. Uh, but sin in my life hides my light. And I'm the first to admit uh, I'm a saint. I'm a saint of God. Uh, I'm a child of God, but I still got uh, some sinner problems. Paul said in Romans 7, 18, uh, when a boy do good, uh, evil is always present. Uh, I'm naughty by nature. Uh, and the good that I would do, I don't. Uh, and that which I don't do, I find myself doing. Romans 7, 24, he said, oh, wretched man that I am, uh, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Sin will hide the light. Also suffering. Yes, when you suffer, we, we don't want nothing to do with the light. We have a little pity party. Invite mom and pop pity over. Play some organ funeral music. Throw some black confetti. I mean, you're doing good and trouble shows up. We didn't forgot all about the Lord's transcript for my trouble. That Job said, man born of a woman hath but a short time to live, and that is full of trouble. But Job said, though you slay me, you allow this to happen for a reason. You, you, my, my, I'm, I'm, I'm living, my crucifixion is for others' redemption. Lord, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to be crucified. He said, no, 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 no. no. Like, it's just like my crucifixion was for your redemption. Hallelujah. The way up is to go down. The Christian life is professionally paradoxical. You got to be willing to lose that which you cannot keep in order to gain that which you cannot lose. If you lose your life for my sake, then you'll find it. Hallelujah. You got to understand that we've been called to suffer like he suffered. Matter of fact, Hebrews 5 8 says, even Jesus learned obedience through suffering. There's some things about God that we can only learn by going through. But hallelujah, Paul said, uh, and he went through something. He said, I reckon that the sufferings at this time, I'm, I'm, I'm pondering this thing, that what I'm going through down here is not worthy, hallelujah, to be compared uh, to the glory. And that glory is not in the great by and by, it's right now that shall be revealed in us. For I find 
myself learning more about God when I'm in the valley than I do when I'm on the mountaintop. He said, uh, uh, what causes us to hide the light, sin and suffering. If I stand up, I'm a bit persecuted. Well, you ain't, you ain't, I'm not better than Jesus. They hated him without a cause. What do you think will happen to you if you look a little bit like him? They hated him for nothing. Sin causes us to hide our light. Suffering, we don't want that light. We don't even want nobody to know we are Christian. We won't stand up on the job. We won't stand up in the community. We won't stand up even in the church. We won't let our light shine. We won't be salt shakers because of our sin, because of suffering, and that leads to silence. It hinders our light. How many times when we could have should have ought to shared the love of Christ or just gave the kingdom perspective. You don't even have to quote chapter and verse. Just say what God says about the matter. Do justice. Just say it. Hallelujah. It's not a slogan. It's, it's black folk created in the image of God. The Amadio Deo in the Latin. Matter are significant. Just say it, because God said so. Hallelujah. We get quiet. The church is quiet. Especially our brethren of the light as you. Quiet. Hallelujah. And it angers God. It offends God when the people of God don't stand up. Hallelujah. How many times we ought to told somebody about him and we've been redeemed. Psalm 107 to the redeemed of the Lord ought to say something. Silence is consent. There's something wrong when every 10 days in America a prison's built. A Fordham University law professor said something wrong with that. And the only people in there are black and brown people. Something wrong with that. Hallelujah. Something wrong with taking health care away from people that need it. Something wrong with that. Something wrong with making decisions that are solely based on the duck, excuse my street vernacular, on finance. Something wrong with you only care about me in the womb and I care about you in the womb. Abortion is sin. But diss me on the way to the tomb. Something wrong with that. When lights are not saying uh, that uh, everybody matters because they got the image of God stamped on them. Sin, suffering, silence hides the light. That's why this world is so dark. Those of us that need to stand up won't stand up because our God is not the great Jehovah, but it's gold. It's made of gold. But how can we stand? In the midst of trials and tribulation and tumultuous times, uh, sin, suffering, and silence hides our lights and, 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 and won't, we won't shake the salt top. How can we say a single focus? Jesus said, John 20, 21, uh, Jesus prophesied by Peter being martyred, prompted Peter to ask, what, what, what's going to happen to John? If I'm going to be killed, what's going to happen to John? Uh, he said, what is this? 
what about this man? But uh, uh, Peter said to Jesus, and Jesus said in, in John 20, 22, if it is my will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? Mind your own business. Get your eyes off of what other people are doing. Live your life, Peter. Run your race. Uh, do what I called you to do. Uh, I'd stand up when I tell you to stand up. Get your eyes off what everybody else is doing and not doing. And be about what you're supposed to do. If you got to stand alone, you got to stand. If you end up laying over there next to Medgar, Malcolm, and Martin, absent from the body. It's not a bad deal. You're present with the Lord. When you only concerned about somebody else's walk, somebody else's sin, even how it affects you, it's going to derail and detain your deliverance. It's going to detour your destiny. We may waste so much time looking at other folk and talking about what other folk are not doing and pointing out other folks' sin. Uh, John Romans 14, 4 says, Who are you to pass judgment on a, the servant of another? If it is before his own master, he stands or falls, uh, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. I wish I could be a perfect example of this verse, but God continues to work as I allow him in my life to keep my eyes off of what other people are doing, to keep my eyes off of what is done to me or what I think is done to me, to keep my eyes off of the horizontal and focus on the vertical. For only what I do for Christ will last, but I know that I will have to give an account huh, for my own life. Huh? I have to give an account for how I treated his daughter, his children, how I led his bride, that is the church. How about you, beloved? Uh, have you lost your saltiness? Are you hiding your light because your focus is on other people and not the Prince of Peace? I choose. Uh, Will you choose uh, to have a single focus to surrender your faith, a volitional act of the will uh, to the Lord of glory and stand up uh, for Jesus? How do I do it, preacher? Well, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, he said, you got to be watchful. Huh? You got to pay attention. Don't compromise. Huh? You got to stand firm in the faith. Huh? Be determined. Huh? Be resolute in your commitment. Huh? For many ways to fail. There, there are many ways to fall. Huh? Only one way to stand. Huh? You got to be rooted huh? and grounded in Christ Jesus. Huh? Be watchful. Huh? Stand firm in the faith. Huh? Uh, act like men. Huh? Act like a man of God. Uh, act like a woman of God. Uh, don't waver. Don't be shaky. Don't wallow in uh, excessive emotion. Uh, don't let your feelings, uh, don't let my feelings uh, dictate my actions. Uh, but move forward uh, in faith. Uh, and he said, be strong. Uh, don't be weak. Uh, you got power uh, on the inside. Don't be passive. Uh, uh, don't be indifferent. Uh, step up to the plate. Uh, for eternity is at stake. Uh, life is short. Uh, beloved, look, time is running out. Uh, don't talk uh, about it, Jesus uh, uh, when only you feel like it. Uh, but talk about him. Uh, live for him. Uh, stand up uh, as a saint. Uh, stand up uh, as a single. Uh, stand up uh, as a husband, stand up as a wife, stand up 
as a teenager. Stand up for marriage. Stand up for ministry. Stand up in the marketplace. Stand up in the pulpit. Stand up in the pew. Stand up in the public square. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of calling on your name for being rich in mercy, for creating us with minds to think and emotions to feel. Help me, Holy Ghost, and a will to choose good or bad. But I, I said I have to decide by the grace of God uh, that I'm going to make better choices. Uh, I'm not going to live by how I feel. Uh, I'm going to live by faith. Uh, I'm going to have my mind to be renewed. Uh, I'm going to engage my will. Uh, I thank you for, for forgiving me of my sin. Uh, say yeah, because deeply uh, I want to engage you. Uh, I want to engage in what matters most. Uh, I want to stand up. Uh, I said stand Stand up for Jesus by his strength. I must not fail. I will not fail. I cannot fail. Lord, help us to stand up every day of our lives. I'm standing on the promises. The promise I'll never fail. He'll never fail me. The promise that nothing can separate me from the love of God. The promise that if I give, he'll give it back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm standing on the promise that if I put him first, he'll add everything that I need. Say yeah, it's time for the body of Christ to stand up for Jesus. I'm standing on the promises of Christ. He's my king. Glory. Somebody say glory to the newborn king standing on the promises of God. Yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time, God. It's past time for the body of Christ to stand up uh, in a greatest commandment way and be an ocular demonstration of the incarnational truth, uh, tabernacling on two feet, impacting a sin sick secular society, and not praying. Playing pathetic partisan politics. For our kingdom is not down here. Our kingdom is up there. And you're getting us ready. But God, till you come, help us to stand. Black, white, red, and green kingdom citizens and call a nation to repentance that act like we really want revival and spiritual weight, man. We don't want it, God. We don't want it bad enough to call a nation, to call a world to repentance and reparation and restoration and restoration and restitution. Where everybody else got it. Japanese got rest reparation. Germans got reparation. Uh, Native Americans got some reparation. Even slave owners got reparation. Everybody but black folk. I still want my 40 acres in a mule worth about 7 million a day. Oh God, uh, bring repentance so that we can truly say we're a nation whose God is the Lord. That we might hold the public square, the pulpit, and the pew accountable to be light in darkness and be the salt in the earth. Thank you, God. Maybe there's somebody here today. 
say, Preacher, I've not been shaken, solid, everywhere I go. My light is out. It's not even a flickering flame. When I get in certain circles, color matters, not black or white, green. And God, I don't want to be judged for selling my birthright for 30 pieces of silver. God, I pray for revival in my heart. We say, Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. But let it begin with me. Lord, I repent for not shaking the salt that you gave me for not being a light. I repent. Light in the home, a light in the house of God, a light in the community, a light in our concentric circles of contact. Lord, help us to shake that good salt, that Himalayan pink salt. It won't hurt you. God, I pray for believers to stand up for Jesus. That the world might know there's a peculiar people in the land that are not swayed by donkeys or elephants, but stand up for lions and lambs. God, thank you, Lord. Maybe there's somebody here listening. Say, preacher, I need, I don't even have salt in my life, the word of God in my life. It's quick, it's powerful, it saves, it cuts, it heals. Simple prayer, not from the lips, from the heart. Save me, Lord, I'm lost. I'm a sinner. I know I'm on my way to hell, and I'm one heartbeat from hell, and I need a Savior. I believe that Jesus is that Savior. He suffered and died. The sinless died for the sinful, that we might be made right with God. Bow your heads and say, Lord, here's my heart. Break that hard heart. Give me a heart of flesh. And I can be sensitive to spiritual stimuli. Save me. He said, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13, shall be saved. And I give unto them. It's a gift. John 10 to 28, eternal life. It begins the moment you ask him to come into your heart. You'll never perish. You'll never die. Neither shall any man pluck you out of his hand. You're here today. Just slip up your hand and say, Lord, just pray this prayer. God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin. I believe you came to live a perfect, sinless life. The gospel, the good news, died, but didn't stay dead on the third day, rose from the grave. And you said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead in sin, on their way to hell, yet shall they live, be alive in Christ on your way to heaven. And God, we pray for, for those of us who life's been out or flickering flame or haven't been shaken the salt. We pray for forgiveness, God. We confess our sin. And God, you said if we confess, you're faithful and you're a God of justice. You will see that justice is done. You did it with your own son. You gave up your only begotten son that 
we might, that he might be the propitiation, that he might be your satisfaction for justice. Jesus was God's divine satisfaction for justice. Thank you, Lord, for the healing. Lord, you said you're faithful and you're just to forgive us. And, and it's an impact. You continually cleanse us. So cleanse us today. Lord, help me, help us to walk out of this place being salt shakers. Lighten up the world with the glory of God. We pray, God, for those families that are grieving today. And pray for Brianna Taylor's family. The pain, no dollar amount can heal this pain. The injustice, Lord, we pray that righteousness and justice, which your throne is built upon, would rule in the land. And God, we surrender Who's to be in the White House to you? Lord, let us not fall out with one another because of politic. Let us stand for righteousness and justice. Give us wisdom for the days ahead. We thank you, Lord, and continue to provide As you already have, like the book of Philippians, that mental health book, we need our mental muscle to be soothed and healed by the master every day with all that we're wrestling with. Lord, let us look to your mental health book for healing, for staying power. Let us not let sin or suffering Silence us, but let us be singly minded, focused on the Father. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that these were helpful holy hints that will ensure a prosperous pilgrimage. It's time, beloved, for a real church, the real people of God to stand up and be what God has called us to be. God bless you. You can go to our website, www.nazarenebc.org to hear all of our midweek moments of meditation and all of our Sunday sermons and um, the, the gospel is outlined there for you. How to Grow in Christ is outlined in one of our links on our website. Uh, you can view this at any time. Have a, uh, viewings with your friends and family that you might begin to grow and let your little light shine everywhere you go, every day. God bless you. Hold us up in prayer. When you think about it, just say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. When you're struggling, just say, Lord, help me. Not help me, Lord. Lord, help me. Three words. Bible says, pray without ceasing. Be aware of your own core hurts and wounds. Be aware that Satan is relentless. Help us, Lord. Lord, help me. And I might be able to walk in ways that are pleasing to you. Father, thank you for this time. Bless us, Lord, that we might be a witness, a light to the last, the lost, and the least. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you. We are praying for you.